Welcome back to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about a spiritual awakening happening in this country and around the world. That's why I'm talking today to Nina Verkoyan, and she is a spiritual teacher, and she has a whole new approach to waking up, waking people up. It's called meta-spirituality, and meta has been a word thrown around a lot, but I think the way Nina uses it is particularly geared to showing people there's more than just the physical reality. Right, Nina? Thanks for being here. Thank you, Alan. So good to see you again. Very honored to be here. Thank you. Well, I've known you a long time, but I really don't know how you started to get in touch. I know you're a fantastic yoga teacher. You have students all over the world. And then, you know, of course, yoga is connected to spiritual awakening but how what was your process tell me a little bit about your story yeah i started with teaching yoga and meditation and then i expanded my interest into like a broader subject of spirituality in general so i am not teaching yoga since 2015 anymore um i quit my yoga business after being featured for the second time on the cover of Yoga Journal Russia. And then I decided to quit because I felt that I am still missing something, some, some missing puzzle that I can't find. And I was getting more and more dissatisfied with my practice because for many years I've been trying on different spiritual and yoga practices, trying everything under the sun. And I still felt that regardless of the amount of knowledge I have in my head, regardless of the amount of uh, hours I spent in meditation, I still have uh, problems in my life between uh, me and my uh, partners in, in business life, in like all areas of life, basically. So I was thinking, why? Why does it not help? Um, if it is my spiritual path that is correct, why my life doesn't change. So my inner so-called progress that I perceived I was having uh, was not reflected on the outside in my uh, visible reality. Uh, and yeah. No, I was just wondering, well, how did you get into spirituality in the first place? And what is really the relationship between yoga and spirituality? Because most people yeah. just see yoga as a way of stretching, being in their body, being more physical. It's missing, at least in this country, the spiritual component. But what was your process of awakening to the mm -hmm. fact that there is even spirit? Yeah. Here? Well, um, I would say from very early age, uh, I was interested in all, all things spiritual. My mom uh, was into astrology and esoterics and all sorts of things. She was doing the tarot card uh, readings. And at the age of 11, I created my own first uh, method of meditation. Uh, she came back home from one of the spiritual uh, meetings where she was given a personal mantra. And she refused to give it to me because she said it's a personal mantra. She cannot give it to anyone and she's going to meditate. And I wanted to meditate too, and I got super upset. So I went to my room, I picked the random first word that I wanted to meditate with, and I started repeating it to myself, and I got into this expanded state of mind. I started laughing, I remember I was 11. And then that was the first time when I realized that the power is not actually in external things, external mantras, external, rituals and objects, it is within us, within our own self. Right. And then I got into yoga and then how yoga is connected to spirituality is because it teaches you more, um, it teaches you basically being more conscious. You cannot do yoga when you are not present in your body. You cannot put your legs behind your neck or stand on your chin and think about tomorrow or yesterday you need to be here and now. So this kind of develops the muscle of um, awareness. And that starts to reflect slowly in your daily life with everything else. But I kind of quit 
being a yoga teacher many years ago, and I started going deeper into uh, meditation practices first, and then into spirituality in general. That's how I got here, uh, where I am now. Well, do you think because you were so tuned in as a child that maybe you were some kind of spiritual teacher in a past life, some kind of, because you already had that connection, so you must have had some soul memory of, of something like that, right? You know, that's what my first yoga teacher told me. You must have been a yogi in your past life because I could sit in, in, a, in the lotus pose on the very first yoga lesson. But I will say something that is very not popular, like a very unpopular belief here. And um, it, it is a very like contradicting um, vision of the situation. I no longer believe in past lives. And this is going to sound extremely radical, but I'm going to try to explain myself. Yes. I, I believed in past lives and reincarnation of the soul. And I was teaching that. But then in 2016, I had this very um, tremendous spiritual transformation and uh, an experience of awakening where I truly tapped into oneness and became all that there is. And I realized that on the high level, there are no individual souls. Separateness is what we see here in this visible reality. And uh, our ego mind creates in its own image an idea of separation on the higher plane too. Uh, while what I felt during that moment of enlightenment is that on the higher level, we all share one soul, one consciousness, one thing that is not separate. There are no individual souls that are separated from each other, interact with each other, because that would be a repetition of what we have here. So on a higher level, in what I perceived, and I couldn't accept that for a long time, because for me, it was a completely uh, contradicting everything I believed in. But the feeling that I got uh, during that moment of enlightenment was so powerful it completely changed my life and divided it to before and after. And I truly uh, tapped into the oneness on all levels. There would be no separation perceived anymore, anywhere. And well, it don't you think, though, that, um, of course, we're all tapped into the oneness, but what about when people do have flashbacks and memory parts of different things that's coming from somewhere can you explain that yeah absolutely that's my favorite question because i get asked that a lot of times when i talk about the no separation on the higher level so uh, because we are all one we literally have one soul one higher mind if if we may call it like that so sometimes we break through the veil of forgetfulness and we get on the other side accidentally, spontaneously, maybe during some meditation or trance um, states of mind or different substances that we use. And from that level, we get into the oneness and we receive oneness and we feel other people just as us, you know, we feel them as they're us. Uh, certain people we get into, but our ego mind starts to interpret it. The ego mind doesn't know how to interpret oneness. It believes, oh, if I feel like I am that person, it means I have been that person in my past life. Mm -hmm. It cannot comprehend the fact that, yes, you are that person. You are every single person that ever existed because from the higher point, when you get there, you can get into anybody's ego uh, mind, anybody's form and get a glimpse. It's like a glitch in the system, but your mind doesn't know how seed through oneness. So it creates, oh, it was past life or future life. So that would explain, you think, how like maybe my memories were like in World War II and it's not like, a particular person I knew, they came to me, these visions, I wasn't tuning into somebody. So mm -hmm. it just seemed like I have a soul connection to certain places and times. How yeah. do you explain that? Yeah, we, as I said, we can be in anybody in any time at any place. 
but sometimes in certain moment of our current present life, we need certain information for our development. We need to understand something and we create those scenarios of remembrance from any other person or time or place that will serve us some something. We don't know what, but this is still our help for ourselves, you know? So we tapped into somebody who we feel as us, and it is us, but just like anybody else. From that point of the higher mind, we are all, we are all that is. But we need sometimes the experience of feeling somebody is us in order to get something from their experience, from their feelings, there in quote unquote, you know. Yeah. Well, I understand what you're talking about because we are all just oneness and these personalities that we have are just an aspect of something much bigger and we're a part of something much bigger. But I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. But when you had that moment of enlightenment in 2016, yeah. what created that? How did you get there and have that awakening? Yeah, that's an interesting story, actually. So as I told you, I tried different meditation techniques. I tried everything that's that would give me understanding, enlightenment, anything, but it wouldn't happen. And then I gave up. I quit searching. I quit looking. And then suddenly one day when my glass was empty, not filled with all the concepts, I actually got so disappointed in them because they didn't bring me home. So I abandoned them and I gave up. And that's when suddenly out of the blue one evening, I was sitting in my bed. I wasn't even laying down yet. I wasn't sleeping yet. It was kind of a later evening. I was about to go to sleep. And then I thought to myself something about love. Uh, I don't remember who and how it was related. And it's, it's not the story of the interview. But I asked myself one simple question. What is love? I truly want to know what is it? Is it some instinct? Is it some psychological need to not be alone? Uh, is it, what is it? I truly tapped deep down. And then when I asked myself this question and I was alone in the house, I was in a proper state of mind, I guess, to receive. And then the answer came to me immediately, but it didn't come to me as a response in words. It came to me as a complete radical shift in my perception of who I am. I was the answer. I was love. And the answer that was given to me was that this is what love is. This is our true nature. This is our vibration. This is what we are. And I became that love, knowing myself as everything there is, as the creator, just like anybody else. And I felt that. So that was my answer to my question. But did you stay in that state of oneness? Yes. I mean, where it happened? How did you? Yeah, um, yeah, it was very powerful, uh, very difficult for the mind to uh, to comprehend. Uh, it's like a complete detachment from the body. It was very difficult for me. I couldn't eat for several days. All I was doing is sitting and writing down all the information that was uh, I wouldn't even say coming to me. It was just suddenly there, fully revealed. There were no questions. There were just answers. And everything was crystal clear. But in the first day when it just happened, I couldn't even get myself back together to start writing or comprehending the words and the letters. Uh, I, I couldn't read. The letters would like fall into something that doesn't have any meaning. Like I literally couldn't read because my body and uh, so-called spirit was so disconnected and I was so much beyond my body that I couldn't even realize what is written on the tea bag and uh, I couldn't eat it felt super foreign I couldn't do anything but then I slowly started bringing myself together trying to get the most out of this situation and trying to process it and then all the answers that I was given to, I started uh, writing down as, as understanding. It was like a week long process. And then what happened? Did you slowly come back to being? An it was gradually dissipating with each day. And I, after probably a week or maybe 10 days around that time, 
I got back to what felt before as my regular state. Yes. But did something stay with you? Of did course. Remain? Yes. So Everything what remained. And yeah. what's your connection to that state now? Yeah. The truth, the last truth that I was looking for for so long remained because now I knew. And I often give people uh, this comparison. It's like you suddenly climbed your inner Everest. You're not supposed to stay there and live there. There are no conditions for living there, but you need to get there on the top in order to be able to see a full panorama, 360 degree vision of reality, like holistically, like in wholeness. Uh, and then you need to go down and you need to apply what you've seen, like a map that got revealed to you. You need to apply that in real life on a daily basis. You're not supposed to stay there all the time. It's impossible to live in the body in that state. But now you know and you see everything differently. So your teaching now is meta spirituality. Is that uh, yes. an offshoot of that state of consciousness? Yes, yes absolutely. So, well, so you know, Deepak Chopra has his meta 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 human deepak chopra has the meta human idea yeah. and that's i think related to what you're doing but i think you're taking it to another level so what do you mean by meta spirituality meta spirituality is uh nina's website and platform so talk about that meta spirituality and how you how people work with that and how you work with people yeah so what I call meta spirituality, it's an emerging spiritual tradition, an expanded version of the so-called old new age spirituality, because I believe that everything that was once new becomes old. We are evolving and we require more and more sophisticated um, understandings of everything around us. Right. And uh, meta spirituality is this upgrade from the previous version of spirituality where we still had intermediaries between us and the creator, the source. So what meta spirituality believes, uh, it's better to say what it doesn't believe in. It doesn't believe in separation on all levels. It doesn't believe in rituals and intermediaries and separate souls and reincarnation, but it does believe in one source that is present in only present moment of here and now, everlasting present moment. Um, that's why I don't believe in past and future because from the higher level, it is just now. Uh, time is not linear. It's like a dot from which everything unfolds simultaneously. But, but uh, meta spirituality is what helps you to build a direct relationship between you and your true self and God and the creator and the source without intermediaries, because I think we've already graduated from using intermediaries such as prayers, affirmations, um, visualizations, even gurus. meditations. And gurus and, and guru. you know, yes, and yes, traditions and yes. tarot and astrology. Yes. And Yes. So without spirituality, without those kind of mediations, how do you work? How do you help your students? Yeah, I have my main like body of work. It's like the landmark of meta spirituality, which I called the last truth, uh, based on what I received myself, which was the last truth for me. And that's uh, a good name for a book, you know. The last I am truth. writing a book. I am writing a book. You yes. Say the last, the last truth. truth. Because the, yeah. Because the last truth is also the first truth, right? But anyway, right, it's yeah. the only truth, basically. Yes, right. So yeah. yeah, tell me, tell us how. That so these are lectures. These are lectures that slowly bring you to the top of that Everest, and then slowly bring you down and teach you how to apply the last truth in real life, because there's no, no value in simply saying and even knowing that you are the creator. You need to know how to apply it to your daily life in order for this life to be created differently. So this is meta spirituality teaches you how to build a very different relationship with your creation, with the visible reality. Through the 
Give us a sample. Give us a way of working with this that will help people listening. Give them, you have to give them something to show that it works in their life. Uh, no, it's not a quick fix. It's not a magic pill that I can just drop into the mouth of somebody who is just listening now. What I can tell is that this is a different way of looking at life. And in that course, we start from the beginning. We empty the glass. We dismantle all the old spirituality concepts. We go one by one, the belief in separate souls, the belief in uh, soul contracts as a result, then in karma. And we realize that we prescribe to ourselves our own lessons that we want to go through. And one by one, we empty ourselves and we climb all the way up to the Everest. And then we start to go down and learn to apply that new vision and see things through the eyes of meta spirituality. And if people want to actually get a true taste of what it is, they can get for free on my website on the very first page they can get a free introductory lecture on meta spirituality in order to understand if it's actually something they resonate with it's free you can just immediately download it it's instant download and then you feel if you're ready you need well, to not be to, ready not to give too much away but could you give us a little taste of that free thing to see because i think you know instead of talking around it people want to have something they can uh, hold on to. So, I can't. I, can, yes, I can't. I can't because yeah. meta spirituality believes, uh, believes not in techniques, practices, um, all these type of things that we are so used to rely on. We used to rely on certain crutches that we uh, use in order to walk. So this is not a technique I can share with you and you're like, oh, it's working in my life. There's no practice, one practice I can suddenly give you now and magically your world changes. What I can say is that you are a, an advanced, maybe the word advanced is not the best, but if you are an experienced spiritual seeker who feels deep in their heart that you are so done with all the intermediaries, and with old approach, and you feel that these were just the stepping stones to something bigger, and you feel you're ready for the bigger, for a direct relationship with the creator, which is you, then I would encourage you to get this free introductory lecture, which I created with intention to guide you through the initial understanding process. Well, how do people find that lecture? How, how, where, where on my website, matter-spirituality.org. Uh, mm -hmm. So you feel like this is the next level for people who have been looking, been on the path, and they never have found. I think a lot of people have found a little bit of truth, mm -hmm. but you're saying, but you don't want to make yourself into a guru either, right? You don't no. want to do that either. So no, and that's impossible. That? Yeah. How do you yeah. avoid, yeah, not creating what you're saying you want to not create? You know? Yeah. In the very first lecture of uh, the Last Truth uh, course, my first lecture, my first words, um, I start with saying, let's start learning differently. And the very first thing I want you to do is to perceive my voice that you're hearing now, not as my voice, but as your own. So we need to start with a completely different perception of me as a teacher. You need to understand that I am, just like everything else, is the creation of, of your higher self. And the words I'm telling to you now, you are telling yourself. And you cannot perceive me as a teacher who is above you or below you or somewhere. You need to perceive me as you, literally, mm -hmm. as a part of you that you are talking to. But that's true of everybody we meet is us then, right? Everyone on the street, yes. in the stores, in the shops, yes. and it's all us. Yes, it is. But we don't have relationship with every single thing that exists in the world we choose what to come into relationship with we still choose our partners here and now 
based on a combination of our personal beliefs, personal preferences of our ego self, and that higher knowledge that moves us forward and wants to ex uh, experience something specific in this life. So let me ask you, I hope it's not too personal. And, um, you just had a baby recently, last year, and how does that- She's already four. <laughs> oh, sorry. You had a baby recently. Well, so kind of, yeah. that new new being come into the world and understand that that they're everyone and i mean because you're looking and because the, the initial feeling is it's them it's you it's you're the mother separate yes. so then how do how do you avoid the yeah. ego development that happens in the west yeah it's very difficult it's a great question thank you alan uh, when we, especially when we become parents or even with our maybe uh, mother and father, with our own parents, uh, with our loved ones, uh, we tend to forget who we truly are. We tend to separate. We, we tend to not want to remember that we are all one. It is very difficult. So uh, it's actually a work in progress. And I don't mean work like um, in a negative right. way. It's but a development, yes. It's yes. Progress. yes. It's as I said, the I think that spiritual path starts when you get down from that mountaintop and you start to apply what you now know of who you truly are, of yourself and everything else around you. And it's a daily co-creation with your meta self. And it's difficult. We tend to slip back into the forgetfulness. It's very difficult, especially with kids. So it's, it's not easy. But we can what combine. We can combine. We can yeah. still remember who we are. We can know that we are one but we can still understand that here in the visible reality in forms, we are different. We are different in bodies, in personalities, but we are one on a higher level. So who is the meta self? Who, what is, what, how, is that the personality ego you're calling the meta self? No, uh, meta self is the bridge between your ego self and the source, the creator. It is exactly that relationship that you finally develop after you found out who you truly are. It's your true self that never existed before because you never used it, applied it to your daily life. You never actually developed it. Your true self was like a concept in your mind, but you never actually applied it consciously. So meta self is that higher self that includes all, but also it is the relationship between all. And it is also the relationship between human and God, ego mind and the creator, the source. So that does work with what Deepak Chopra is saying about does the meta human. Is yeah, it? he fits into that somehow. But I think you're taking it a little further as this in between process of. So you're saying the meta self is really the higher self that is starting to live into the human form. Is that yeah. what you call them? Medicine? Yes, it's it's like a third, basically, entity, your third identity that only gets born when you consciously start developing the connection, direct connection, direct relationship between you, your ego mind, and the creator, that is the higher you. So this is the third something that gets born that never existed before, but this new thing is including everyone else too because you know through this meta self that you and others are one on a higher level so this meta self one shared meta self includes everybody else too so is that a place you live from do you or do you still forget sometimes you know your your daughter gets upset and i mean how do you live in the world as the meta self I always say it's impossible to get rid of your ego mind and we shouldn't even try because this is what uh, keeps us alive, makes us be able to think, to express, to talk. It's impossible to do that without our ego mind. So as long as we are the extensions of our true self, we will always have our ego mind, which sometimes depends on our 
uh, depends on how deeply the knowledge and the last truth is rooted in you, it will sometimes show up. So let's see this like a scale that is constantly sliding. It's not like you completely go into the oblivion of who you truly are once you've actually known the last truth. You can't. This is something that changes you that can never go away. You will never go down to that level of, for example, negative emotions like you could before. Hatred, complete aggression, losing yourself in emotion. It's impossible anymore. But you can get a little bit upset. You can get irritated. If you didn't have a good night's sleep, you can feel um, you know, more annoyed of something. If you're hungry, you will definitely feel it and it will get revealed. So it's a balance that you need to constantly recreate daily in the present moment of here and now, every single moment. Well, then what is the last truth? I mean, you've probably been talking about it, but what is it so people can connect? It is with knowing it? the truth of who you are and how to apply it. This is the last truth that everybody is looking for. Every spiritual seeker is looking for. It is this urge to merge um, which is reflected in everything we do. When we want to merge with a loved one, we are driven by the urge to know who we truly are and to experience union on this high level, to include everybody in and feel completeness of your true being. So this urge is... The urge to merge, I like that. There should yeah. be a song called The Urge to Merge. The one, yeah. That is our natural uh, desire to right. merge. That's why we have relationships and families and all that. But then there's still always a separation, isn't there? Always like yeah. me and you and you, your daughter and your family. I mean, there's always that balance between the self and others, the big self and the small self. And I mean, so how do we apply all that in our lives? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we are looking for union, we are looking for the last truth, but the means to achieve it are incorrect. So in order to experience union, we try to merge with a separate physical being, we want them to become one with us uh, in terms of having the same values, the same beliefs, the same view on things, and we choose our partners who will be uh, basically a reflection of who we are in terms of our beliefs, preferences, and so on. And we and when we disagree, that's when the love and union, uh, so-called perceived union, which is like a fake union actually, because it's not true union, it starts to dissipate, it starts to disappear. When somebody is disagreeing with you, you no longer feel love, which only shows us that this is not true love because true love never goes away. True love is always present, it's unconditional. So um, when we try to look for union, trying to get somebody close to us, like a separate human being, we are doomed to fail, but we can reach union through this last truth, through the understanding who we are and how to, how to be in this new uh, perception of reality. And then our relationship with our loved ones change. So let's go into that a little more. So the idea for union, the uh, understanding who I am, I'm not my ego. I am the higher self. I get a lot of that uh, understanding, but then there's always, for me, I'm talking personally, there's a separation. I don't, not quite merging with that part. Maybe it's my issue merging with the infinite, you know, it's always, what, you know, what... Maybe if, you're ready for meta-spirituality. I am ready for meta-spirituality. <laughs> I am. I think I'm ready for meta-spirituality. Maybe that's but, why we, we are talking. Maybe that's why we met. Maybe that's maybe. why you created me as your own voice that tells you now about this new uh, vision in order to bring unity into your perception. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're all looking for, that unity of being, that merging yeah. with the self. But even when we have that, it seems so brief, right? It seems so... We short. never have that. That's the problem. We never have that. 
No, we, we never, never had the union. No. We never did? No. no. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> what? It was an illusion, you're saying, what we thought It we was had? partial truth. Let's call it like that. It was a stepping stone to get somewhere else. Um, yeah. Well, how do we know when we do have it, though? What are the you signs? Definitely of know. You definitely know. There will be no questions about whether it is that or it's not. This is the certainty that uh, is very difficult to comprehend from the separate ego mind, because when we are in our ego mind and never experience that unity, every certainty seems like um, something too audacious. And that's true because in the ego life, in the ego world, there are no truths that we can actually be certain of. Everything is partial truth perceived through the ego mind. But when we reach unity, we know immediately and our search is fully complete. There are no, no questions. I get what you're saying. I, I've had moments of that. So, but that's nothing. I mean, that just comes from grace. That comes from, you know, I mean, when I've had moments like that, it comes from just being present, presence. It comes from, I don't know how you can help people with that because it seems to just come like it just came to you and it comes to like Eckhart Tolle sleeping on a park bench or Neil Donald Walsh who I know you'll be talking to and other people it just comes so you're saying it's not about teaching it's removing everything in the way is that basically sort it of is true challenge? there are a few parts to this first it is removing the uh, partial truth uh, concepts so that they don't cloud your vision and the truth that is inside of you. Because you know that inside of you is just too much that is not truth that clouds it. Second thing, uh, it is not true that in order to experience unity, we need to experience this uh, enlightenment revelation. Because now, through the eyes of unity, I can see that we as the creator, we can create the revelation through different means. So revelation doesn't have to necessarily come through the fireworks in your brain and your enlightened and everything. You can also reveal the truth to yourself through the discussion with somebody and then the remembrance starts to, to kick in, the remembrance comes. All you need is readiness. This is all you need, readiness. So when you're done and fed up with struggling, with searching, with seeking, with practices, with gurus, with other authorities, with indirect relationship with the source, when you're truly ready and there's your decision, I am ready, I want to know it, it immediately happens and it doesn't know, it doesn't matter how. You will create the best scenario for yourself, how? So you've um, helped other people in your meta spirituality work get to that place. Yes. Of union. Yes. By, by not doing it for them or not being the guru, but just, just what pointing out what's in the way of because we're already there, right? I mean, on some level, we exist in oneness and we've come from oneness and we're returning to oneness. And the, it's, it's, the goal it's, right now is to embody this oneness and to live it through in our physical form, to be the body mind and still know who we are and express it and live it through. Uh, how people, uh, what is the process of uh, remembrance for people? So people who are ready come to me. People who are on the edge of, I am fed up with everything else. I am ready. I am done struggling. I am done seeking. So when you're in this state, you create for yourself this scenario and this opportunity. And in this state of readiness, literally anything can become a trigger for your own remembrance. And when I start talking to people through the place of oneness, uh, removing the obstacles in their head, removing the uh, wrong perceptions, like distorted perceptions. Let's not use the word wrong. There's nothing wrong, just distorted. Not seeing the full picture, just seeing partial truths. It's like seeing a 45 degree angle of reality instead of 360. So when you're ready, 
on that soil of readiness, you just put a little seed and this seed is getting um, revealed through you and it's like blossoming. There's nothing so I do, it's you. When you're ready, you give it to yourself. So once we get there, once we have that revelation, then what? Then like, okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Where do people go from there because they're one and, and what's there to do? They create a new world. Every single thing will need to be re-envisioned after you started seeing the world through the eyes of your new meta self. Everything will be completely changed. And the way we perceive anything is the way we create it. We are the one who observes and creates through the observation. And when you see differently, you create differently. So we will create a different world with no conflicts, no wars, no separation. So how do we, so you're in this state and then do you even have a desire since you're one with everything? Why would you even have a desire to create the world? Yeah, you have more desires than ever because you realize that the true nature of the creator is to create. Creating is its function, is the source's main uh, mission, let's call it like that. Without any desire, you don't have any uh, motivation to express yourself, go into any experience uh, or any uh, desire to basically create the world but the world gets created anew every new moment. So you need to have desires. You need to create this world like, like an ever expanding universe. You expand yourself through your desires. But the only difference is that your desires from this higher perspective, they are conscious. Mm. So is it then what they said on Master Eckhart, my will is thy will, like your individual sense of self, the, the desire to create is not from the egoic place, but it's from the place of universal consciousness to bring more possibility into the world. Would you say that's the mm -hmm. level you're talking about? I would about? say the only thing that changes because on the surface, the desires could be the same. Uh, you might want the same thing as anybody else on the surface, in your truth, you are driven not uh, by the desire to prove something to someone, to achieve because you feel lack of something. Uh, you are driven because you know yourself as the creator who wants to create, who wants to experience, who is curious, who wants to try out as many things as possible and express itself through as many experiences as possible. And you do it without uh, incorrect motivation. Mm, that's great because that goes along with my theory about why we come into this world in the first place is to be creators, right. to emulate creation as creators, not to do the egoic thing that separates us, but to contribute back an emotional value to the rest of humanity, which increases the, the infinity of of knowledge, awareness, consciousness, it just goes back. So yes, that's very much fits in with what I'm doing. But day yeah. to day for you, um, how do you live day to day? How is your, you know, you're dealing with your child, relationships, other things. It's like, how do you bring that awareness to your everyday life? Yeah, so from the moment, since the moment I received the last truth, uh, I think I told you in our private conversations, my life changed completely. And this is not an exaggeration. For 33 years until that happened, I didn't have stable personal relationships. I never thought I will have kids. I wasn't interested. I didn't have any success in my expression into the world through my professional um, kind of professional uh, things, right? So it was all a struggle. In every you did have success as a teacher, you did. You oh, I wasn't happy. It was at the cost of my inner satisfaction. It was, it, it was something that I had to, 
tolerate basically. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. When we try to achieve things through the place of lack, not knowing who we are, it doesn't bring us happiness. It doesn't really change anything. Yeah. So how do you live now day to day? So everything changed, but what is different? What is what has changed really? My every day is now dedicated to actually remembering the truth and applying it to to everything basically that I see. And every day I am working towards uh, promoting this knowledge, making it more revealed for everybody. Uh, as you know, I have a lot of students um, everywhere around the world. I am now entering the American uh, arena and uh, hopefully it will be um, as popular here as it is uh, in the Eastern Europe. So um, I am truly dedicated to this thing. I live it. I like this. This is my main passion. This is my mission now. And this is what I dedicate my every day to. Do you, do you think this is more important than having family and relationships and the job? Is this, is this somehow? Yes, yes it is. It is. Because without it, everything else you have, every other relationship you have will be a complete struggle. Sooner or later, it's not, it's not going to be harmonious. It's going to be like, because you are a creator in oblivion who creates chaos, conflicts, and problems if you don't know who you are and can't apply this knowledge properly. So yes, this is the foundation that you cannot not have. And relationships don't really mean much unless you know how to develop them beautifully. Otherwise, it's just a struggle. But doesn't it take two people on that same level to do There's no two. There is not two. There's no two. But if you're dealing with someone who's in separation, you're dealing with you're, yourself. You're dealing right. with yourself. You're, you're dealing with yourself. And if yourself yeah. is not in the oneness, I don't know about your personal, but and maybe it is. But I mean, for mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, it's a process of working together to form a connection of oneness and for that relationship to come out of oneness i i haven't seen that too often but maybe it exists mm -hmm. or something here's the thing here's the thing when you don't know who you are and you don't feel complete and you don't have everything inside you and you separate others from you then every relationship you form will be uh, serving a lesson for you. It will teach you something rather than it will be a lesson of happiness of uh, working or creating something together. It will be something that shows you something that you need to learn. You will prescribe yourself those lessons. Mm -hmm. And once you actually know who you truly are, then you create on a different level and your relationships no longer become struggles. So it's, it's always about remembering who you are. And then there's a reflection. If you remember who you are, everything will be harmonious. You will create consciously and you will create uh, beautifully. If you're not- but How do you work? How do you work with your daughter who probably wants to be independent, wants to, and then you have to develop an ego before you can oh, dismantle yeah. the ego. Yeah. So how do you de deal with that developing ego, that sense of separate self? It's mine. It's this. I want this. Like I am your... totally okay with that. I totally understand that kids uh, need to do whatever they want to do. It doesn't mean that I never get upset. It doesn't mean that I never get, uh, I never yell. Of course, I yell and very loud if she if she if she runs to the road where there will be a car or if she wants to jump from a higher tree i i yell and it, it doesn't mean that i need to uh, to forget who i am you know or forget who she is but we still uh, know that this is how it is this is the process this is so the the main goal for us is to see union where we didn't see it before mm -hmm. From that, everything starts to create to get created differently. Mm -hmm. 
So just to sort of wrap up here, because I'm enjoying this, I think you should be on Buddha at the Gas Pump. Do you know that show? I yes, would, I do know. Yeah. I think he would enjoy this dialogue, the guy who runs that. Mm -hmm. um, your, let's just get back to your daughter for one second, because if, if she does something to get you upset, then you process it and say, what to yourself? How, what am I wanting? What am I needing? What, where am I missing something? Where am I lacking? Is that what you do? Absolutely. I truly believe that kids absolutely 100% reflect our state. Uh, the way she acts, the way she acts, if she acts like she is angry or aggressive, she reflects my forgetfulness of who I am right now. She reflects my own inner state. It's, it's a co-creation always. It doesn't matter that she is four years old. It's always a co-creation. We are still one. And I can see through the eyes of oneness why this is happening. Mm -hmm. And in this, I know how to apply. I need to apply the patch of the last truth onto the situation in order for it to heal. What, how do you do that? How would the patch of the last truth you would apply to? You get back to remembrance. That's the only way. That's the only solution. That's the only answer to any question in life, to any problem, to any conflict. You remember that. And through the eyes of union, you no longer perceive separation, perceive conflict. And they, so-called, they change. You see that they change. They reflect who you are now. Is there anything after the last truth? Is there anything after union? Anything from this level? It's very, it's the goal of humanity to reach that, um, you know, trans, trans dimensional state of union. But what's a, what comes after? Application every single moment because life gets created every single moment anew. So you or us as the creator, we need to create continuously. We cannot forget. So this is a every single moment you keep creating, applying the knowledge, creating a different world, creating what you want to experience, but in a better way, unlike before. Beautiful, beautiful. It continues. The expression, the application continues every day, every moment. It never stops. But after we complete this plane of existence, I'm just going a little further, and there's union and everyone's in union and it's beautiful. Is there another level? No, I don't believe in levels. I don't believe in hierarchy. I don't believe in separation. I believe in here and now and who knows who we will be in 20,000 years, who knows how the world will, will look like, uh, who knows what we will create. We cannot um, even imagine that right now from this point. So if we create this sense of sense, the self, if the world wakes up, then we had talked about in the interview we did with me, my ET friends, right? Mm -hmm. Where does that fit in? Is that just another extension of the self you're saying? Yes, it is. It's all included. Everything's included. Every everything. animal, every tree. Everything. 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 There's no exception. You, you feel that. Yes, I do. You're feeling that way. Yes, I do. I you do. feel it every day, every moment. Well, not every moment, no. As I said, sometimes I start to slip down the scale and I start to forget and I bring myself back, I pull myself back and... Yeah. So I see what you're saying. So if there's like a little disturbance, the disturbance is the reminder that you've forgotten that. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I see. So everything's working in your favor, you're saying that. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. I appreciate that. I really appreciate your perspective. And people, if they go to Meta Spirituality, then the website is meta dash spirituality uh, we can put uh, we can put this link under the video yes. yes and what will they see um but what do you do you do coaching what, what what do you see on the website my main uh goal right now for this year at least is to simply build 
presence and give this new perspective and and introduce this new approach and so uh, the only way you can actually learn from me is first you subscribe to my newsletter you receive this free introductory lecture if you feel it resonates with you you subscribe to my channel uh, youtube channel instagram and you learn from the uh, snippets of truth i even have my youtube channel which is called like with youtube series called uh, shots of truth um yeah i i will write a book very soon i'm working on it and then people can have a complete uh complete kind of like a course i will also probably start doing retreats for those who want to have a personal connection with me again only through the eyes of knowing that i am uh the voice that they, that talks to itself but it's not that new. I mean, this is what the Hindus call Advaita. There's no separation. I am you, I am that. It's like the I am that teaching. It's new for our world, but it's it's the original. There are a lot of differences uh, between meta spirituality and Advaita. I studied it extensively. Uh, I don't think we have time to go into that uh, deeper, but there are very distinct uh, differences and I will try to maybe address it in some next YouTube videos or somewhere. Yeah, let's do another interview because it sounds a lot of what you're saying is what people have studied. But I think what the problem with Advaita is, it's just, it's just words. It doesn't give you yes. the experience. It doesn't teach you how to apply it. It doesn't actually change anything in your life. Yes. Right. And you're really wanting result, not wanting, but the, the energy, the meta spirituality is a very practical, practical tradition because we are done with just concepts and ideas and uh, all of that. It's a practical knowledge that you need to apply. As I say, our spiritual path starts when we know the truth. And then we start to apply it. The power of truth is in its application. It's a daily application. Well, just define truth and then we'll wrap up. So how do you define that? It is uh, non-separateness on all levels. The problem with the majority of um, current teachings is that they repeat the words, we are one, we are one, we are all one, but there is nothing behind it. Again, it's just an idea, it's just a concept. They say we are one, but more in a metaphorical meaning, not literally. So it's not applied to their daily choices, their daily reactions, daily interactions. Uh, oneness is seen as a metaphor, not as an actual truth. Right, and that's what's different because Right now, I'm seeing you as separate, but I'm also hearing the words inside my own head as if my self is talking to me yes. about one. And then what's the reason for personal relationships, you know, for marriage, for that? Why, why is that? Why uh, that, that, that? That's a beautiful question to finish our interview with. Right. The main reason for all of that is that the creator, the source can experience love you need to have extension of yourself in order to have some feeling to be reverberated back to you and then you actually know it you complete the circle so uh, the creator the source always knew love as a concept mm -hmm. as itself it was never directed to it in order for it to be directed to the source it needs to be coming from so-called separate us, seemingly separate us. But also this love would not be true if we believed in, in the source as a separate being. We wouldn't love the creator for, for who he truly is, which is us again. So in order to complete the circle, we need to know exactly what creator is. We need to know that this is who we truly are and we complete the circle inside of our heart and then we are complete so the main purpose for love relationships for any relationships is to remind us that true union it happens inside our heart has nothing to do 
with uh, external people who we try to get union and it never, never happens. It never happens. We never find that um, illusionary perfection in merging, fully complete merge with somebody. It, it's an illusion, but we can actually only truly know love and truly love someone when we again know who they truly are. When we know somebody who they truly are, that they are part of us, that's when unconditional love can actually happen. As long as we perceive somebody as separate, we, we cannot truly know them, we cannot merge with them, we will not be able to love them. So this is all about experiencing true love. Beautiful. It is about experiencing true love. And thank you for, you know, sharing your process, your insights, your efforts to bring the world together. I've thank been you. talking to Nina uh, Verkoyen, who's a great um, coming into her own as a teacher here for lots of people who will be um, awakening to themselves and her her website meta spirituality is something that can i th help everyone get into that awareness and of course you'll be doing courses privates and co it's sort of a coaching thing in a sense because you're it's not you're not you're not being a teacher because you then if you're a teacher then you're up on a pedestal it's more like you're with the person and you are maybe helping them see what's in the way of their own, their own selves. Is that it? I am their voice. I am, I am your voice. I am the finger that points in the right direction. I am not the direction. I am not something right. to reach. That's the Buddha saying, don't, don't mistake the finger pointing to the moon as the moon. Right. right. You're yeah. the finger pointing to the moon. <laughs> thank you. Nina, yeah. thank you. Thank for you your so time. much, Helen. It was a pleasure. As yes, usual, it was great. as usual. It was great to go a little deeper. Now I understand really where you're coming from and I get it and I really get your mission and and why you're so passionate about sharing who you are. So thank you again. Thank, thank you. you so much, Alan. Until next time. Yes. Bye. Bye.